in a few hours I'm going to get up and cycle 100 miles. Whoop de doo, I hear you say. Anyway, hard to believe though it is. It's not all about me. It's about the nutters who are running 100 miles on the Murray Way 100 tomorrow morning. I'm going to be sweeping behind and uh, picking up all the, the litter and signs and uh, tape and stuff. Yeah. Anyways, uh, for such an adventure, uh, who better to ask to accompany me than the best female adventure cyclist in Scotland? However, Jenny Graham said, who the fuck are you? <laughs> so uh, I asked the next best and uh, Gemma Baird said, <laughs> who the fuck are you? Annie Lee was similar and uh, Louisa Ross just said, fuck off us, I'm getting a restraining order against you. So plan Z was Roberta Walker. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so, uh, yes. We're uh, at Fintorn and uh, the race starts at 5am at Forest at Grant Park. Uh, they'll be coming past us about an hour later and then uh, once we've seen them pass I'll uh, get my bike ready and head out. It'll be about 28 hours, that's the cut off. So we'll be out there in for 28 hours uh, sweeping them up. The weather forecast is shocking. There's a storm due in tomorrow night and it's going to be very heavy rain and winds of up to 50 miles an hour, which uh, yeah, uh, not really looking forward to, but uh, hey ho, we'll just get on with it. And uh, yeah, I'll record some of the day and I hope you enjoy it. Bit windy out there. Breakfast. 0622. Runners should be through. We'll be going in about uh, at about seven o'clock, hopefully, and try and catch them up. Okay, 0730, and we're about to start off and start chasing the tail enders. We stopped the night at Fintorn. Uh, this is the the beach toilets. I actually camped in the campsite just beyond these dunes here. But uh, for anyone thinking of stopping here at Fintorn, £15 per night, it's an automatic online booking system. Uh, it's really good, but the most important thing is, in the toilets they have nice toilet paper for your morning constitutional. That's the most important thing. None of your horrible maxi flat, flatten the maximum amount of shite on your arse kind of toilet paper. Proper nice fluffy stuff. Thumbs up from Pete. You guys ready to go? Probably the last time I'll see you today because she'll be shooting off and uh, talking to everyone but the last but the back marker who I'll be with. I will come back and visit. <laughs> sure. For the bike geeks etc out there, you'll notice that there's no trailer today. Uh, what I've done is put a surly uh, rack on the front and I'll put the all the signs I take off on here with the held on with the bungee. The reason for that is there's a section of the Speyside Way which is gate hell. Uh, it's bad enough on a bike on its own but it'd just be impossible with a trailer. So I'm using the rack today and we'll see how we get on with that. It'll probably still be shite but never mind. Right, onwards and up. Hmm. Rob's got a pound store bike with a B&M bike packing gear. Absolutely. So the first section is the Murray Coastal Trail all the way to Garmouth. Then we take the Speyside Way up to Granton on Spey. It's looking bonny just now. But it's cold. I don't know what the temperature is, it must be about 8 degrees. There's a breeze, but at least it's dry. Fingers crossed. Well, we're out in Rosile Forest and uh, we bump into the legend that is dun 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 <laughs> Jez Allen. <laughs> He's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> On his fat bike. <laughs> How are we doing Jez? 
still alive. Yeah, okay. Just on my <laughs> way to Findhorn from a regular exercise. Good man. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, and you guys, yeah, yeah. take care of yourselves. Enjoy your trip, won't you? <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> 24 hours later. Where are you, where are you going? It's a 100 mile um, route that they're doing. It's the Murray Way, so at Forest, um, all the way along here, all the way over to um, oh, um, Blossomouth, and then up to Pockabers, and then along the Speyside Way, and then over to um, Granton on Spey, and then back down the Dava. So cut off time's about 28 hours or something. Yeah, that's them running. Yeah, that's... I'm sure there was three of them that I saw. Oh, right. There was one that in front of the, the first two, probably about a quarter of a mile in front, right. and the other two were like running as a team. Okay. Oh, well, it looked to me like they were. And, uh, yeah, keeping, keeping each other going, but 100 miles. Yeah. Yeah, come back, go the long way. Yeah. <laughs> what I didn't like was the fact that the steps was like that, so it was just knocking me down. Those of you that know the coastal trail, this is a coast guard lookout point in between Oatman and Lossy West Beach. We found the first back markers just coming out of Oatman at 20 past nine. I've left them, Rob's away ahead. I've left them and I said I would meet them at the Harbour Lights Cafe in Lossy Mouth because I'm going to go for a breakfast there. be pushing it for time I think. It's a really nice morning. Right. If I do it right the next thing you'll see is a hyperlapse down this coastal trail. It's a beautiful bit of trail. Guess what idiot number one did? Forgot his GoPro attachment mounts so this is all going to be on phone today I'm sorry. And the other thing is because we left so late, high tide is now and we've got the Lossy West Beach to go down over there there's the lighthouse so we might have to forego the beach and go along the the dune paths which are quite gorsy and uncomfortable but we'll see how we get on, I'll try the beach first it's a very low high tide so we're able to get along it and Rob waited for me, bless her. It's amazing what ugly people you meet out on the trail. Yeah. Neha, she's beautiful. Oh, you're not <laughs> but him. <laughs> How you doing, Dave Storick? Great. Dave used to ride mountain bikes in this area, but he's moved down to Fife. God knows. There. God knows why. I'm not sure bacon and egg rolls are in the ultra marathon handbook, but never uh, mind, they're due for us. Uh, this is Michelle, the photographer for today, so she's taking a picture of everybody. She's in a, a monkey onesie. <laughs> Very good, Michelle. Thanks for making the effort and thanks for turning out for everyone. Cheers! They keep tying all the tape to gorse just so I prick all my hands when I take it off. Bunch of bastards. They've thought of everything here. You even got glasses so you can read the map. Much easier with a GoPro this. Yeah, 
here's the back markers. More walking than running today, but they're still on time to finish. This is the bit everybody hates. It's just pebbles underfoot. It's bad enough on the bike with nice squishy tyres. I'd hate to run it. It's about a three mile section to Garmouth or to Kingston. Just horrible underfoot. Here is a, a coastal battery and during World War II they put the turrets from World War I battleships in these shelters, gun emplacements. You can still see the mountains on the floor. Might do a video or a wild camp in these at some point. Yeah. I think they were built by prisoners, Italian prisoners. I think some of them stayed in the area. Send more paramedics. Mr. Pillbox is shocked. <gasps> this is an MOD firing range. So if there's a red flag here, you're not supposed to go in. Mind you, I know what the RAF are like at firing, so you'd be quite safe. GoPro's back in the room. Mrs D came through with my mounts, so might get some footage before it gets dark. Okay. This is the Spey Viaduct at Garmouth. And that's a big lump. This signifies the end of the Murray Coast Trail for us. At the end of here we turn on to the Speyside Way. Unfortunately, we've got a southerly wind. So between here and Granton, we're going to be head on into the wind. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Which just blow me off when I get into the Madrilla.
Yeah, I'm not taking that big sign down. <laughs> so this is a test to see if the GoPro media mod actually does reduce the noise of the wind. Because it's pretty blowy in against the wind right now. I've left my two stragglers behind. They're uh, both carrying injuries and they're just walking. And they uh, don't think they'll make the 20 hour, 28 hour cut off and nor do I. Yes, they've got a long way to go and they're going too slow and they're only going to get slower but they have a support crew with them who are uh, meeting them at every possible point so I don't feel too concerned about leaving them behind they can look after themselves and they know exactly where they're going so I'm taking the course down in front of them now but I'll make the final call whether to not wait for them when we get to Granton because it'll be blindingly obvious whether they'll make the, the cut off then or not Oh, brambles that makes a nice change just a different kind of something to shred my hands to pieces Ow! Thanks guys, love you! Pillars, it's starting to rain. Not too bad at the minute. Hopefully, it'll hold off. But the forecast was pretty dire, although I believe it's improved a little bit. So maybe we won't get as wet as we thought we would, but we're definitely going to get wet. Um, I've got a new back marker called Ash. The other two are still there, but they've been looked after by their support team. 
uh, who have been a nice hand, gave me some uh, leftover drop bags, so I've had a nice meal down in Fork of Us. And um, I've just had to have a little fettle with my bike because the left crank or pedal was crunching. And I'm hoping, well, hoping that tightening up all the, uh, the crank arm bolts has fixed it. Otherwise it's an acid pedal and it might fall off before the end of the night. And we've got, uh, how much have we got left? Uh, God knows, about 100k left. So I don't really want my crank up to fall off just now. Anyway, I'll go and catch up Ash again. Oh, nice gel for me to take. I like this sign. Just because your muscles start to protest doesn't mean you have to listen. How true. Can you tell we're just about to do the biggest climb on the course up Ben Egan. So I had to leave Ash at the boat of Brig car park. He couldn't walk anymore, side of his knee. Brave effort. But now Ben Egan, I thought I might be able to cycle this. Not a hope in hell. <laughs> Added bonus is that on this bit there's no wind in the midget out and you're going your slowest of the day so the way things get you deep joy aye no bad space aye no bad Right, yeah. we'll fill that up for you while you have your coffee. Okay. Yeah, fantastic, thanks. Okay. Do you want any more of that stuff in it or just water? I'm going to... Oh, you've got your own thing, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. right. 
Okay. This is a really quite picturesque old station at Tamdu. However, you can't really see it just now. Where's the Tamdu sign? Oh, it's over there. It's quarter past eight at night and we've done about 94 kilometres. So we've got 66 to go and the rain hasn't really hit us yet. So hopefully it stays that way. And I'm just waiting for Kilty Man to arrive at Damdu Station. Um, my bike. Is, it sounds like a bag of spanners. The seat post keeps cracking the whole time. I think I need to grease the, the quick release for that. Bad maintenance, Pete. But also, there's something wrong on the left crank somewhere. Yeah. I'm not going to fix it tonight because I just tried tightening it all up again and it's rock solid so it's not what it was before. It's probably the bottom bracket. Oh well, hope it lasts to the end. Well, Poshman. It's like Game of Thrones. Now guys, it's Sunday afternoon and I've had a few hours kip but I'm still knackered. I'm really sorry but there's no more video footage of the race after Crag and Moor. Now the reason for that is simple. Those of us in the mountain bike fraternity know that the Speyside Way is unsuitable for bikes. I've heard this many times. However, I thought how bad can it be? Well, I was just totally unprepared for how bad it could be. The issue is you get uh, ushered or forced to go along barbed wire corridors with V-gates at each end. There must be over a hundred V-gates. Now, even if you have someone helping you, getting a bike through a spring-loaded V-gate is really difficult. If you're on your own, it's nigh on impossible. So what you have to do is pick your bike up over the v-gates so i did this and it was all right for the first 10 or 15 but after that it gets really really tiring towards the end i was just exhausted i just could not pick my bike up anymore so i had to can the um the route and i went via road from milton into cromdale and then from cromdale along the back roads to Granton where I, I met up again at the checkpoint. Uh, consequently the signage is all still on the course between those points. 
not that there was much, that, that's what really annoyed me when I was out on the course. I was suffering and dying and I wasn't even picking up any signs. So uh, in future, huh, there, there is no nothing on this earth that could ever make me take a bike down that course again. Even Sharon Stone in the 80s and 90s begging me would not get me to go on that course with a bike again. It was awful. So after uh, Grand Town, we uh, had a bit of a rest and then went down the Dava Way. The forecasted wind and rain didn't appear. It was uh, sub-zero for a lot of the, the Dava Way. Really cold. Uh, but everyone that we passed uh, or met up with was uh, in really good spirits. It was great to see. You wouldn't believe that these these people have done nearly a hundred miles. They're absolute nutcases. Um, when I got back to Fintorn, I didn't even have the strength left in my arms to, to pick my bike up uh, and put it on my bike rack. So my bike's still in Rob's van. Uh, I'll pick that up later on. Uh, it was a tremendous event and I'd love to do it again. However, I'm not doing the sweep a bit on that section between Crag and Moor and Cromdale. It has to be someone on foot sweeping that bit. Anyways, peace out.